All right, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. So we're gonna be starting unit four, um, which is all about bonding and how it affects our atoms. And so with lesson one, we're really gonna be focusing on intramolecular forces. Um, and the two largest groups that we're gonna look at are ionic and covalent compounds. So first we're gonna do a little activity. You should have this page in front of you. What I want you to do is look at the examples of ionic compounds, which are highlighted in yellow and the examples of covalent compounds, which are highlighted in blue. You'll then go through and answer the questions that are in um, this part here that I just highlighted in green about that column. So for example, if I'm looking at NaF, which is sodium fluoride, does it contain a metal? Yes, we know that sodium is a metal. Does it contain a nonmetal? F, or fluorine, is a nonmetal. So the answer is also yes. Does it have two different elements? Yes, it does. It has sodium and it has fluorine. Does it have three or more, like three or four different elements? No, there are only two. Does the name have prefixes? Prefixes are things like mono, di, tri, prefixes that represent numbers. Octa means eight. Tri means three, and we don't see that in the name at all, so the answer would be no. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and fill in the rest of the chart. Press play when you're ready to check your work. And seriously, do it on your own first. That's how you learn. Okay, so now that you can see your answers and check your work, one thing I wanna point out is that our covalent compounds all have prefixes, okay? They do not have three or more elements, and they do all contain non-metals, but there are no metals, okay? So this is a key feature, um, which actually I wanna just compare the ones that are different. So if we're looking at separating, right, our ionic compounds, versus our covalent compounds, right? What makes them different? If we look in each row about what's different, we can see that this characteristic here about whether or not it contains a metal is consistent across all six. So ionic compounds do have a metal, covalent compounds do not. Whereas the fact that it does contain a nonmetal, that's in both of them. So that's not something we can use as a distinguishing feature. They all have two different elements. And remember, that's because they're all compounds. A compound has to have two or more elements. Okay, and something else we see is that whether or not the name has prefixes is also consistent and opposite for ionic and covalent compounds. Ionic compounds do not have prefixes in the name of their formula and covalent compounds do. Now one thing I would like to point out as another interesting fact is that it looks like one of ex our examples of an ionic compound does have three elements. We have lithium, carbon, and oxygen in the same one. So it looks like ionic compounds can have three or more, but they don't always because the other two examples don't have it. So as we look at this, okay, number one, compare the characteristics shared by the examples. So we can say that ion or ionic bonds, ionic compounds, have metals and nonmetals, right? Um, and they can have two or more elements, okay? Um, but our covalent compounds, they have only nonmetals because they do not have metals at all, um, and they have only two elements, they can't have more, okay, and they have prefixes in their name. Okay, so this is kind of our summary. And I'm sorry if you can hear the projector beeping in the background. I messed up that wording right there. Okay, now, so how can we differentiate the examples from non-examples? And by that I just mean, how can we differentiate ionic versus covalent. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pay attention to those rows highlighted in yellow. So you look 
or not highlighted in yellow, highlighted in pink. You look for a metal because a ionic compound will have a metal, but a covalent compound will not have a metal. Or you look for prefixes in the name. Okay, those are the distinguishing characteristics that we can use to identify them. Another thing we can look at is the physical and chemical properties of these ionic and covalent compounds. So if we, again, are looking at the exact same chemicals, okay, our ionic compounds are highlighted in yellow, and our covalent compounds are highlighted in blue. Okay, let's look at these characteristics and compare them. So we see that when we compare these melting points compared to these, what do we notice? We notice that ionic compounds have a really high melting point. Covalent compounds, they're in their negatives or zero. That's extremely low. So let's say um, that that is a big difference. So these are high and these are low. Okay. When we look at the boiling point, these also appear to be high and these are low. We can see that the state of room temperature, these are all solids, whereas these are gases or liquids, okay? These are strongly conductive, meaning they're really good conductors of electricity, but these are not conductive at all. And it looks like ionic compounds dissolve in water, covalent compounds do not. So um, we can say that they have, they don't really have any similar characteristics between ionic and covalent. So really we should focus on how do they differ. The ionic compounds, so ionic compounds properties, we can have high melting points and boiling points. So high melting point and boiling point, which is abbreviated as MP and BP. They're solids at room temperature, they're good conductors, and they dissolve in water. Notice a lot of those properties, the high melting point and boiling point, solid at room temperature, good conductors, those are properties of metals, and ionic compounds contain a metal, okay? So how can you differentiate? Well. That's pretty much what we were just working on. So let's kind of erase that question and just put covalent and kind of summarize. So these are the opposite. They have low melting point and boiling point. They can be anywhere from gases, liquids, or some of them are solids at room temperature. And they're not conductive and they don't dissolve easily. Okay, so these are kind of our properties of ionic and covalent compounds. And so with this, okay, you've got a general overview of how to identify an ionic versus a covalent compound and how to look at the data from a laboratory experiment to determine whether or not you have an ionic or covalent compound.